Hello everybody and welcome back to Chris Bosch Props. Today we are going to do another video and I am going to show you guys how to fiberglass your 3D printed parts. Now why do we want to fiberglass our 3D printed parts? Well we want that extra confidence like when we're wearing a Robocop suit or an Iron Man suit to a Comic Con we really don't want to worry about it breaking or cracking or anything of the sort. As you guys have seen in my previous videos I have successfully worn my Robocop suit multiple times and that suit is fiberglass. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. I'm gonna show you kind of the pros and the cons of what come with it. But overall, it's not really hard to do. Anybody can do this at home. And let's jump into it. Let me show you how I do it. All right guys, so for the stuff you need, I'm just gonna do a really quick rundown. You're gonna need a respirator. This is just a cheap respirator that you get at Harbor Freight. That's just to keep you from passing out from the fumes or getting cancer about 30, 40 years from now. So yeah, you definitely want the respirator. This stuff does not smell very good. You're gonna need some cups to pour your resin into and you are definitely going to need, of course, the fiberglass resin. I just use this Bondo fiberglass resin. You can get this at Lowe's or Walmart. It comes with two bottles of hardener and you just mix that up and it gives you exactly what you need. The next thing you're gonna need is some brushes. I get these brushes. These are two inch brushes that I get at Harbor Freight. Comes in a box of 36, so plenty. They're just disposable one-time use. Uh, next thing you're going to need is some gloves. I get these gloves also at Harbor Freight and they are the five millimeter vinyl gloves. And of course you are going to need some fiberglass mat. This is 1.5 ounce fiberglass strand mat. Uh, it is cut up into squares and I'm going to show you exactly how to use it here in one second. And you're going to need some mixing sticks. These are just cheap wooden uh, popsicle sticks that you can get at Walmart also. Alright guys, so we take our cap off, we're gonna pour our fiberglass resin. I'm probably gonna fill it up about three quarters of the way. Next step guys is we want to add our hardener. I have found that the sweet spot on a cup like this, about three quarters of a cup, even a full cup, is 50 drops. That's the sweet spot, 50 drops. We have our mixing stick. You really want to thoroughly mix that hardener in with the resin. Give yourself about a minute to mix all that in. And we're probably going to use another cup or so. But we're gonna start with the chest piece today. So we have our brush. I like to pull all my bristles out because you will get loose bristles sometimes. So I like to pull them out before we start. Let's get our resin here. Sorry, I'm gonna sound a bit muffled because I have this respirator on guys. And I'm not a very good narrator. So this is the way we're gonna do it. So I get a little bit of resin and I like to do what's called a tack coat, okay? This is just a light coat on the areas that I want to get and this is just to help the fiberglass stick before I go back and dab more resin on top of it. Now the main parts that I really want to get are these seams, okay? That's where we have the multiple pieces that I've glued together. I really want to get those seams and make sure they're covered with some fiberglass mat so that I don't ever have to worry about those breaking. At least not breaking easily. As easy as it would be without it. All right. So we have our little bit of a tack coat there. That's just enough to get our fiberglass to stick real good in these areas. Now here we grab our squares. Now what I like to do is, I like to kind of just break it up a little bit with my hands. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it a little bit. 
And then I'll just kind of dab just a little bit of fiberglass resin on it still, even though I have a tap coat. And then right here, you can see I have a seam that's running across here. These are two parts that I join it or glued together. I'm gonna take that mat like that and then kind of start dabbing it in, okay? Now I'll go back and get some more of my resin, as you can see there. And that fiberglass starts to really, really absorb or that fiberglass mat really starts to absorb the resin. And that's what makes it really, really strong and rigid is when it starts absorbing it, like so. And it starts to look really, really pretty. You just gotta keep dabbing it with your brush. And then you'll see some of those white spots. You just go back, get a little bit more resin. Just like so. And we'll keep working the rest of the piece here. Okay guys, so I'm gonna break up some more fiberglass mat. I got my cup here. Uh, I've warned you guys in my previous videos, if you watched my other fiberglassing videos, it's messy guys, okay? The stuff is messy. I like to use some cardboard underneath so I don't get this all over my table. I'm a cardboard hoarder. I have tons of cardboard for stuff like this, for spray painting. So make sure if you have some cardboard, save some. It comes in handy for stuff like this. But yeah, same thing guys. I'll start dabbing it in. And you can move it around with your brush if you'd like. Come back in here, get some more. You might kind of have to hold it with your hand because when you dab it, it wants to move around a lot. But that's fine. Very nice. Now I'm not worried about getting every little piece up here guys. I'm really most concerned with my seam lines, okay? So don't think that you have to get every little crevice, okay? I just, I'm really, really concerned about my seam lines. And remember that when you fiberglass, you're adding more weight to your piece. So it's gonna be a little bit heavier guys than what it would be without it. That's kind of a con of fiberglassing is it does add weight. And it's okay if you get a little bit that goes over the edges, you can go back and trim it once it's hardened. Okay guys, so I kind of gave you exactly what you need to do. I'm pretty much gonna do exactly this to the rest of this piece and all of these pieces in here. Not every single piece I'm gonna fiberglass, there's certain parts, like for instance, this leg, I'm not gonna fiberglass the whole entire leg. I'm really only concerned about this part right here, the, these, because this is where I'm gonna connect the calf to hang and dangle. So these are, these are points of friction where it's gonna hit other parts. So I want this area to be a little bit stronger than the rest of this that's not fiberglass because that's what it's gonna be hitting. So. Yeah guys, so that's pretty much it and I'm just gonna keep working and going through everything.
All right, guys, so we're done fiberglassing everything. I have everything kind of laid out, waiting for it to dry. Um, as you saw in the time lapse, I didn't really fiberglass everything and every single piece except for the chest and the back piece. I did most of it on those, but for the leg, all I really did was the upper area, and that's just because that's where I'm going to put my snaps for the straps to hold it up on my legs. And I also did down here by the knee area, and that's because that is where it's going to be connected via straps and buttons to the cab like so. So I fiberglass those areas just so I don't have to worry about those snagging or breaking or any of the friction causing problems right there. So that fiber, extra fiberglass in there is going to give me the protection I need uh, for the elbows. All I did was the joints. I didn't do the whole entire piece, just those. Same thing here on the arms. All I did, I didn't actually use the mat. I just put a little bit of resin in there along that seam. And then right here also at the elbow joint, I added some fiberglass. Now I have to go back in and trim that but that's gonna give me that extra reinforcement when, let me get the right elbow, when I get that elbow in there and put the bolt through so that it can move like so and I don't have to worry about it snapping or breaking right there. So yeah, I think I showed you guys the shins. It's pretty much mirrored. I did the same thing on both sides. I only put fiberglass mat and resin up at the top near the knee area and like I said that's just because that's how it attaches like so for the helmet I wasn't gonna do anything because I printed the helmet all as one piece so it doesn't really really need it but I did put some right there because I didn't use any supports and there was quite a bit of overhang right there so I just wanted to make it a little bit prettier but you don't have to do that <laughs> But yeah, that's it guys. So I'm waiting for this to dry and then I'm gonna go back in and start trimming everything up, making it look pretty. And then we're gonna go super hardcore on the body work, getting everything trimmed up. So I hope this video helped you guys. This would work on anything. This would work on your Iron Man suits, your Halo suits. It really does work. And it is extra work, but it does give you peace of mind when wearing it out especially at conventions or events so i hope that helps guys i hope you enjoyed and like i say always we are on to the next one So